had a few things to dive into today, man. I want to, like I said, talk ball. I want to talk about me and PG talked about this on his channel. You can watch the video. We kind of dive into the best QB wide receiver duos in college football. But I want to even break that into just duos in general. So set of wide receivers, you know, and 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 QB wide receivers. Kind of curious to see what everybody thinks about that. Let me. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bad boy up real quick. That's not what I wanted to do, but it's okay. We're not gonna get mad. Let's see. How do I want to do this? All right. I'm actually organizing on this side, and I'm gonna move you there. There we go. We're gonna pull that up so everybody can see. We got the that list that popped up from 247. I thought it was interesting, right? Me and PG, like I said, talked about it the other day. What jumped out to me on this is, one, it's the, oh, of course, all college football. Two, they actually got a fresh, well, a sophomore on here that has no real starts, right? No, no long-term starts. So we have a very small sample size of what he's done with Jackson Arnold. And so I thought this was real interesting to see. So, um, Chris, looking at this list, here's your top 10. You got Quinn Ewers and Isaiah Bond is one. You're looking at uh, Dylan Gabriel, Tess Johnson at two, Noah Fafita and uh, T-Mac at three, Cameron Ward, Carson Beck, all the way down to Jackson Arnold number 10. You dropped a video talking about Jackson Arnold, you know, the five reasons why he'd be successful. When you see this, does this sound right? I, I think it does. Some of it may be a little bit of recency bias. Some of them, some of it is, is built off of hype. Um, I mean, look, we, we've had that DG experience. We understand that. Those, those long balls, you know, you're either on this side or you're on that side of that subject or whatnot. But I think this list is correct for right now. Um, I see I see Jackson Norton and Nick Anderson being able to, uh, you know, Honestly, it could be Nick Anderson, it could be Gibson this year, Dion Burks. Hell, it could be Farouk. It could be Andre Anthony if he comes back healthy. So, I mean, I think he has a, a, a group of guys that give him the opportunity to really advance, um, advance in this. Uh, uh, excuse me, advance upwards on this list. I think the the interesting thing is is that um, now Emeka Emeka Ibugwe like. I get it with that, but Will Howard, I don't know. I probably would put, <laughs> I probably would put the boys at number nine and, and, and start there. I think Trey Harris and uh, Jackson Dart already, uh, I mean, I think they could uh, they could arguably be higher. I think Brady Cook and Luther Burden could be higher. Um, I think Carson Beck and Dominic, Dominic Lovett could be lower simply because Brock Bowers isn't there, so now it's going to be like, who the hell is really going to step up? Hell, it could be Evans, you know? Right. I mean, I don't, you never know. And I think that Cam Ward and uh, Restrepo, is that how you say his, his, his last name? I think it's Restrepo, yeah. That is, Xavier Restrepo. I think that's a solid place for them to be on that list. Why? Because he's – I mean, I, I think he's just like a, a Cole Beasley, those type of guys, you know, as far as just those, those vaunted, you know – slot receivers that are just open all the time right I see that so so um you know I, I think it's a pretty good list but definitely with Jackson Norlo to answer your question directly I, th I think it's fair where they're at I think it's uh I think it's only going to get better man I really believe that he's going to be successful and I think that he has a group of guys that could uh that could propel him to that next level as well because he, he has a lot of talent and I mean let's just be real this is this is one of the first years that you can legitimately come into a season and say I think that we have a a a really really good wide receiver room not just one or two guys no we have a really good wide receiver room yeah no exactly PG you know we talked about this a little bit now that you've marinated on it from our conversation how you feeling about this entire list like like what any changes in opinions or thoughts when it came to seeing this setup? Oh, a hundred percent. Um, I'm even, I'm moving Quinn Ewers and Isaiah bond down quite a bit, mainly because 
I don't think Quinn Ewers is as accurate as a quarterback as he needs to be. And have we really seen enough from Isaiah Bond to think he is one of the best wide receivers on this list? I don't think so. So, again, I think I'm still rolling with DG and Tez Johnson at number one just because Tez Johnson was one of the best wide receivers in the country last year. And then, obviously, we all know what Dylan can date Gabriel do whenever he's healthy and got a good offensive line. And I'm not worried about Oregon having a bad offensive line because – they have, uh, I think it's Tony Cupo out there, and he's really mm-hmm. good. Uh, additionally, I'm looking at uh, Cameron Ward and Xavier uh, Restropro at number two. Uh, Cam Ward's an absolute dog, and Xavier Restropro, again, was a top five wide receiver last year. Um, and, I, and I really like that duo for Miami. Uh, I think Miami's offense is going to take leaps this year. And then I would put Noah Fafetta. Um, I hope I said that right, Noah Fafita and yeah, uh, McMillan at number three. Now, do I move... Jackson Arnold, Nick Anderson into that number four spot. I think a lot of it is going to be based off of what I saw from Jackson Arnold in high school and then what I saw from him, I guess, early in the season in those games that he came into play and then what I saw in the BYU game. Obviously, what you saw in the Arizona game, yeah, it looked bad, but taking the context of he had a put-together offensive line, people were opting out of that game. Uh, Jackson Arnold was obviously going to struggle a little bit there. So looking at what he did in the BYU game, earlier in the season and then what he did in high school. Uh, Obviously, Jackson Arnold's got a lot of upside. Uh, I'm not sure if he's number four, but I could definitely say number five. Uh, I think the one that you really question is uh, Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter because Travis Hunter is an absolute monster athlete. And listen, Shador Sanders, he was slinging the ball all over the year. So You know, you say that, and that that makes me want to ask y'all both this question, right? So when I looked at the list and just kind of just, uh, you know, cliff notes of me and PG talking about it, I like the Jackson Arnold's down there at 10 because that tells me that they see something, especially top 10 in college football, a player that we've seen limited, true, truly seen limited snaps on. Obviously, you saw the potential in the, in the Alamo Bowl and it's there, but I don't understand. We watched Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter like light up college football. Why are they not top five? Like, why aren't they even top three? Because we know what they can do. I mean, Shadur threw for over 4,000 yards, and Travis Hunter is a, you know, he plays on both sides of the ball absurdly well. Why Why aren't they higher? Like, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's one, I'll, like, that's I'll tell you why. One word is humility. That's that's what, that's what I mean, look, anybody that's ever been good in any any type of sport that's ever been on, mentioned on any type of list or whatnot, you understand the politics that kind of go behind this. It's all about just being – be, making sure that, that they understand we think you're we think you're really good we think you're elite but it's a thing about humility as well you know over there colorado's about to flash and dash so i mean i i think that fair that, that's i think that's that um I, i'll go back to i'll go back to this whole carson beck and, and dominic lovett thing and i'm not saying lovett is not a talented wide receiver but that wide out from um, that just transferred from miami hell i think he may have a better connection with carson beck i think he he may be – he could really come in there and turn some heads as well. I forgot about that kid transferring over there. But, yeah, no, I, 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 I'm I, with you. I think that Shadur and Travis Hunter should be higher. I would probably put them higher than Fafita and Macmillan, to be honest with you. Macmillan and Fafita had – a, a really great outing, kind of a showcase against us, which, you know, you'll give them that, but I think I'd probably put them up there higher than that. And I, I think that we kind of have to wait and see if one and two of those tandems are actually going to work out. Like I said, Tess Johnson, fast guy, stretch the field, deep balls. Is that going to be an issue for Dylan Gabriel when he's there as far as that? I know the offense is, I, I, I feel like, more predicated to his game, maybe even more so than what Levy was doing. But at the same time, the deep ball has always kind of been kind of a, a iffy subject, right? Yeah, you know, that's fair. Right. subject. But then also Quinn Ewers and Isaiah Bunn. Isaiah Bunn is, 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 is you know, tabbed as this really fast wide receiver. But, like, you know, I think – who was that that I was talking to? Was it – was it Nick? I think it was Nick. Shout out Nick from Nino's Corner. Maybe it was a tie or somebody. But I was basically telling them, I was like, you know, Isaiah Bund to me is just a stretch guy. He's and I wouldn't even really call him a home run hitter, but he's a stretch guy. But a lot of the plays, if you look at a lot of his touchdowns and a lot of the big yardage plays that he had, I mean, um, 
Milrow is basically he's basically keeping the play alive, and and with his legs, he's keeping he's he's just running outside of the pocket. Everybody's respecting that, and then everybody's getting open down the field. And when he would see the guys, he would hit and connect. So I think we still kind of got to wait uh, wait on those guys, but it's definitely a, a good list, but definitely some questionable some 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 spots on there, honestly, where you could say maybe we move these people now to move these people. Up.